Placemaking is sometimes presented as a magical activity, as if a place could be conjured out of nothing, or as though the creation of places was a kind of natural or inevitable process. In 2015, we spoke to Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Quinn, a senior infrastructure engineer for the British Army. He played a major role in designing Camp Bastion, the main British Army base in Afghanistan between 2005 and 2014. Our interest in Camp Bastion came from the fact that it seemed to be a kind of pure example of placemaking. The location of Camp Bastion was in the middle of a desert, far from other centres of population. In a way it came from nothing, and at the end of the British Army's time in Afghanistan, most of the camp was packed down and shipped back to the UK. This gives Lieutenant Colonel Quinn a unique perspective on the idea of what makes a place, as he was involved with Camp Bastion from the moment it came into being to the moment that it officially disappeared. We asked Lieutenant Colonel Quinn some questions about how Camp Bastion came into being, how its boundaries changed and what kind of index points were used by residents to navigate the space. First of all, he describes how the camp was initially built and then the ways and reasons that it grew. He mentioned the fast food franchises that set up shop within the camp and talks about the difference between the British and American camps. started off with Camp Bastion 1. Um, it just grew and grew and grew, and we had contractors in here, because remember the contractors are with us as well, so the contractors are north, and we want to push them out, and we need to do some training, so we started to use this area down here a lot more, and we thought, do you know what, let's build a new camp. Meanwhile, the entrance was in here, that's called the Entry Control Point, the ECP, and that was how we used to get into the camp. And we thought, do you know what, we need to get bigger than this. Meanwhile, the Americans had built their little sort of camp tombstone up here, um, and we thought, well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's build our new Camp Bastion there. So we built Camp Bastion 2 here. And it's kind of speculative. We knew we had some kind of uh, real estate we could sell off. And there were some areas allocated to units to go in, but the rest of it was empty. But by the time we finished building the perimeter fence, it was full. Everything was completely taken up. We'd, uh, our allies came in there. We've got the Danes in there. We've got the Estonians in there. You know, more people, special forces, the whole lot started to fill in there. And we thought, all right, okay, now what we do? We need, we, we need to do more training. Was there two se- are these two separate perimeter fences? Or yes, is there... there were two separate perimeter fences. Oh, okay. And you thought, that doesn't make sense, does it? Wouldn't it be better to join these two up? And so we then said, right, okay, well, let's, let's, let's think about how we're going to develop this state. We really are jam-packed. So the contractors at this stage were, were just filling us up. So we pushed the contractors out and we built effectively Camp Bastion Zero. And the, and the contractors went in here and the contractors had a batching plant for concrete and everything else. So they really grew in size. Uh, and then some of those Pizza Hut places, well, they put the Pizza Hut in here as well. So, you know, it grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And then at that point, we started to improve the runway. So we built the runway even longer. This time, we built it to take heavy aircraft landing and taking off, not just a dirt strip. So it became a kind of industrial uh, runway. So you can't... So there are certain... Planes that couldn't land on the dirt strip. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, so we, qu- we couldn't have... Uh, uh, the, in fact, there's only, there's only one plane that could have landed on the dirt strip, um, and it's a Hercules, a C-130. Um, but we wanted to we wanted an aircraft with bigger lift. We really want the C-17s and to, to land and, and other things like the um, Antonovs and things. So we started to think, well, what's the best way to do this? So we in, improved the airfield um, to, uh, to take um, heavier aircraft. Um, and then at this point... Um, uh, in came Uncle Sam, and Uncle Sam built um, his camp here, which is Camp Leatherneck. And Camp Leatherneck was built like an American town. You know, it's on a grid pattern. You've been to Washington and other places, you know, so they, just, they thought, I might possibly need this in the future, I'll put it in. So there's a huge camp plonked in there. And they also wanted to improve the airfields as well. So that the, And they said, well, do you know what, we want a taxiway. So we'll share the cost, and so they sh- shared the cost of building a new runway, extended this one out here and they put in some facilities on this side for the for the marine expeditionary air wing meanwhile we started building on this side filling this in and we put the ammunition storage area in here it wasn't big enough so we increased the ammunition storage area and that wasn't big enough so we did a bigger one and it just went up to here it just went massive and at this point we thought Do you know what if we fill this bit in and we put the perimeter down there we call that camp bastion three that was two and one we filled this in and we put a new entry control point there and by this stage, you then look at it and you think, right, okay, here's an American grid town, built like a classic American town. This looks like a British town, doesn't it? It's a mess. It's just grown up organically because we needed something at that particular time. 
And that, that really made a different flavour to how the two towns were next to each other. And you could, even if you just parachuted in at night, you could stand across and you could work out where you were, just the way it was laid out and how it was constructed. Next, we asked how people navigated around Camp Bastion. Um, that's very interesting. And actually, people used to get lost a lot. And, and what would happen is um, you'd say, oh, yes, uh, go, go, down, go down this road here. And, and in America, it's easy because Americans named all their roads. It was, it was uh, Echo, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, one, two, three, four. Ah, easy. The Brit one, it was, oh, we're in Camp Bastion 2 with a second camp on the rise just after the dogs. So you go, like, oh, there's a dog unit oh, with a second camp. Or they say, you know, that, you know that big red ISO with the one after the red ISO? Well, that doesn't work when you move the red ISO around. So people would get lost in Camp Bastion. So you know, we would say you had to know where you were generally. So what, what were the index points that you'd used to navigate? Right, well, early on there's a, there a huge, here, um, there's a huge um, uh, stack of ISO containers, one on top of the other. It was absolutely massive and you could see it from all around the camp. Right? So, so you'd say right next to the big stack of ISOs, not good when they win. The other one would be the uh, air traffic control tower was there, you could see that from everywhere. Um, another one might be, uh, there was a little tower you could see called the White Tower. You'd say, oh, you can see the wi- by the White Tower. Or you could say the helicopter landing site. So there were, so there were some key things, or oh, the DFAC. Everyone knows where the di- oh. dining facility. They all know where the dining facilities were. The DFAC 1, 2 and 3. Oh yeah, DFAC 1, 2. So they know where those were. But there were some soldiers who, uh, not just soldiers, but all, all three servicemen, you know, them and, and, and sailors in a land country, there were. But th- some people would come in, they come in from the UK, land in here, get bossed in at night to their spot, and not leave it. And they might, their job might just never leave them, uh, them get out of here. They might even go into Camp Bastion 1. For them, it might be a day trip out to go to, to Pizza and then come back again. So many people didn't know their way around this place. And very few people knew, very few Americans knew the way around Camp Bastion, and very few Brits knew the way around the American camp. In the next clip, Lieutenant Colonel Quinn tells us how the perimeter boundary of Camp Bastion changed over the years of its existence. Right at the very beginning, all we did was put some barbed wire down around it. That was it. And then we moved the barbed wire to build the rest of the camp. We then brought in a contractor who would come and put in the permanent fence behind it with, with posts and, and fence line and everything else. And we then put that permanent fence in here. And um, sometimes one of, the, one of the concerns we had was the contractor might be working up here and he wasn't protected and people might attack him. And that actually happened, you know, they were shot at. So putting in that perimeter was really quite, uh, was, was, wasn't a straightforward uh, issue. In response to that, we asked about the layers of security, boundaries that, when crossed, triggered different forms of behaviour on behalf of the soldiers guarding Camp Bastion. Yeah, so, so first of all, it'd be a berm, you know, and it'd be a sort of post and saying, don't come over here, please, right? So the next bit, they come over a berm, and that would be the trigger for someone to go along and investigate, you know, why are you in this area? And then you'd have, um, and you'd have uh, there's a ditch, right? Someone's really got to make a lot of effort to go over the ditch. They can't accidentally drive over the berm and the ditch as well. So they cross the ditch. Then you'd have a series of wires and a series of fences as well. So all these are kind of layered, and as they start to create their intent to come in, you start to um, escalate your response. And, and this, is, this is all what we call force protection engineering. And, and we do the same thing even in more complicated far into control points. So, and so we'd, we would have a, a, first of all, there'd be a stop, you're entering a base. You know? And so if someone started driving past that, you think, right, I'm now interested in that vehicle, there'd be a barrier. It wouldn't be a very hard barrier, just be a little finger barrier. If they don't stop at the finger barrier, I become very interested. What's the finger barrier, like? the, 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 the car park barrier. Yeah. You know, Mr. Bean can smash through that. You know, it's, it's not going to stop anyone that's intending. But it's you start to, uh, you start to be able to determine their intent. That's what you're trying to do. And th- they, you can see that you can start to infer their dif- intent by how keen they are to cross over your barriers, how keen they are to negotiate the chicane. You know, how how do they stop in response to signage and other stuff? You know, so so. It's not just the physical things, there's also the, the actual reactions that you might have. And it kind of triggers that. Yeah, so, so right. if you say starting to mess around with that perimeter wire, one of the responses might be to fire a flare. You know? And so you fire a flare near them, and they, start, they, they, know that you, they know that that guard tower has seen them, and we know what you're doing, please go away. So, and if that doesn't work, then it escalates a series of responses. So in, in, it accuses 
as you say, an SOP, a, a series of responses in relation to the nature of the threat that's been perceived. So that you don't have to just reach for the machine gun every time. And that, that's a much better response. In that last video, we can see how the boundaries of a place are important when determining what is inside and outside a space, created through human behaviours and physical objects. Most of Camp Bastion was dismantled in 2014, a process overseen by Lieutenant Colonel Quinn. The details of the camp are gone. The equipment has been shipped back to Britain, the buildings dismantled, the few remaining handed over to the Afghanistan army. Any future dwelling on the site will be based on the imprint left by Camp Bastion, a palimpsest to be understood through the traces of infrastructure remaining on the desert floor.